Heidi, hi everyone. Welcome to Colette's Thermic Kitchen. My name is Colette Matriga. I'm a Thermomix consultant here in Australia. If you're thinking of getting a Thermomix, please reach out. I'd love to support you in getting one and on your journey afterwards. Now tonight at Colette's Thermomix Kitchen, we're actually making an omelette. Andrew loves his omelettes, but we're going to get straight into it, get it cooking, and then we can chat as it's actually cooking. So um, there are, I think, a number of omelette recipes on Cookie Do if you want a guided recipe and I will put this one up on my blog um, after I've done the butter chicken and my um, potato dauphinoise which will be going up in the next couple of days. So um, the first thing we want to do is we want to add in the flavour base for our omelette and what I'm going to add in is basically um, I've got a shallot here you could use a small piece of onion so that's going in the bowl and just a small garlic piece of garlic because Andrew likes his garlic and also just a little chunk of capsicum red capsicums going in you can actually add whatever you want in this so the lid's going on and of course if we were cooking traditionally we would need to chop that up but we're going to get the thermomix to do that and it literally is a case of three seconds at speed five okie dokie the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just scrape that down and just check it. But I can see quite happily that that's exactly the size that I want, so I'm happy with that. So with my spatula, just scraping that down. Lovely. Okay. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add a few more bits and pieces to that. Um, I'm actually going to add into that some ham. Actually, I'm not going to ham, add the ham in just yet. I'm going to add some mushrooms and some tomatoes. And then I'm just going to get that combining in flavour with a little drizzle of olive oil. Not too much. And a little knob of butter for flavour. Okay, and of course, a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, so what we were doing, if we were doing this traditionally, we would now pop that into a pan and we would saute that. So we're going to get the Thermomix to do that for us. So I'm just going to go for three minutes. Normally I'd go for about four, but just trying to cut time on, down on the live. So for uh, three minutes. Um, oh, okay, that's fine. Three minutes and I'm going to go at 100 degrees and i'm going to pop it into reverse i don't want to chop down anymore so it's going to go backwards and i'm just going to go at speed number one and because i have used we're going up at 100 degrees i need to take the measuring cup out and i'm just going to grab a basket so hi back to everyone there from new south wales melbourne auckland perth <laughs> so remembering that golden rule everybody if you're cooking above 95 degrees the measuring cup comes off and remember to take your measuring cup off you just travel your thumb along to the rim of the, the lid and then just flick it forward never actually grab it from underneath because it could be hot you've got those little little holes that kind of let the steam come out all right so that's now sorting for a couple of minutes so a French omelette what's the difference well typically a French omelette is is in its purest sense it's just egg butter and that's basically it for the seasoning they don't tend to pack a lot of flavors into it and it's presented in a kind of a rolled format whereas your American the type of omelette we're used to here the the actual omelette itself is a lot thicker and we tend to put a lot of toppings onto it um, so what I'm doing today is the way that we like it is we're going for that kind of thinner base and we're going to be putting some toppings on. Now in terms of the toppings, you just use your favourites. I would always suggest a bit of garlic and onion because that's that beautiful, um, sweet, lovely flavour that comes from those. Uh, you could put a bit of bacon in there, um, some veggies, whatever you happen to have. But don't overload it, you know, it's just like the pizza. It goes wrong if you put too much on it. 
Um, so what I would recommend is maybe three different things and you're going for about a tablespoon uh, per person in terms of what you're actually flavoring with and that's going to give you a really nice balance in taste. So we've got a minute. Any questions there? Who loves omelets? Who loves making omelets? Me. Well, I like eating them. <laughs> you don't make omelets, Andrew. <laughs> We used to have a, um, a Chinese neighbour uh, when we lived in the apartment in Hamilton and she made um, egg omelettes and she'd put fish sauce in oh. egg omelette and I love those, what a great idea. And then we started the fish sauce journey, it went into everything didn't it? It did, yeah, I used to love my fish sauce. <laughs> what was the wildest thing you added fish sauce to? Oh, um, well, probably most soups and started putting everywhere. them into my pasta and then I went through a fish sauce blitz. blitz. It's awful, awful. Why well, is like that salty hit, you know? I it? do, I do love um, a deep fried egg. Um, I love, and it's really crispy. And then you pour the oil out, and you pop the egg back in, and get the bottom even crispier. And then on top of that, you dredge across some hoisin sauce and some other um, Asian aromats, and that's a beautiful way. Well, oh, it does smell eggs. good. That's. Okay. So I was wafting my way. Yep. So oh. that's the your aromats doing their job. Now, I also remember we want to work tidy. That's one of the great things of the Thermomix. So when you actually are putting your lid down, just invert it and pop that on top. So that's what I've got so far. It's all beautiful and just exactly mm. as I want that. It smells beautiful. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to tip that into a little bowl, which I have to grab. Just a short interlude. Da -de 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 and nice. she's back. Ding. So I'm just going to pop this. It does smell amazing. This is what I'm topping. Mine is a couple of things, and I've just realised there's something from the fridge I need to take out. But you can. It's just going to add so much flavour to our beautiful egg. Perfect. Right. Now I'm not going to bother to clean the bowl, but what I'm going to do is I am going to just mix up. Um, my egg and I've just add, so I've got three eggs here three eggs per person is a generous kind of meal serving um, and I've just um, added a splash of milk just to kind of um, make it a little bit less I guess thick is the word no cheese there will be some cheese Andrew ah. of course there will be some cheese in here and all I want the Thermomix to do here is to simply just whiz this up so I, I would actually say to whiz that up, we'll go about five seconds will be fine, or seven seconds. And I just want to go at speed four will be plenty. Right. So let me just tidy up this little mess here. Give a little bit more room. So that's the egg whisked up. We've got the cooking element done to our lovely um, omelet. What I want to do now is to get the Varoma. And um, I am just going to go across to the tap here. I've got a bit of baking paper that I've cut out and you can see it's roughly the size of the Varoma dish. So remember this is the dish, and sorry, this is the dish and this is the tray. So we're gonna be using the tray. So this is going over to the tap and another short interlude. Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. So what we're actually doing here, I'm just going to wet it and scrunch it up. Okay, bring it out, and then I'm going to take it over to the barroom tray. And I'm going to now make a little dish from this. Now there is a reason why I choose when I make omelets not to actually use the tray and you'll see that a little bit later. So you can see that looks that that's fitting there beautifully. I haven't obstructed the two side vents. If I did, it wouldn't cook because the steam cannot travel through to cook it. So I've done that now and all I need to do is to take my mixed up egg. You can see that's beautifully mixed up and I'm just simply going to pour that on top here gently. Why can't you use that silver tray you've got? You can. I was just saying uh, there is a reason why I prefer not to. And I'll, I'll explain that. To what everybody. do you call it? Is it a trivet or a... Um, the, yeah, the, the, the Varoma tray, which is fabulous for so many things and it has many purposes. 
but for me I prefer not to so all I'm doing is I'm adding in that beautiful topping so there is a little bit of mushroom just a little bit of pepper onion and garlic lovely okay and you can see it's not a really thick covering it's just a finished covering and I am just going to pop this back here I'm going to get this little bit of ham and I'm just going to just sprinkle this here on top so I'm not going crazy with the toppings just a nice fraction bit now Andrew I need to go and get some cheese which I forgot to get bear with me you can another it do, 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 do. Oh, I hope there's less cheese left. I did have some for lunch. Oh, Andrew, did you use all the No. <laughs> I used some. Okay. Now, if you want to stay true to French, and if cheese we absolutely love, Comte is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, isn't it, Andrew? Love love Comte. Comte. Gruyere will be lovely, but we're just putting on just a sprinkling, not so crazy, of cheese. And that's going to be lovely. And then we're going to season that up with some salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay. Perfection. And then the lid's going on. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this over to the sink and I'm going to pop in, pop in here about, um, about 500 grams of tap hot water and then I'll be back. Another short interlude. <laughs> oh, it's taking time to get warm. Got the gas fire on today and keeping the house warm. We've got the towels out ready to jump into our 40 degree spa tonight. That would be lovely. Okay, that's fine. All right, so. Here she comes. Dirty bowl, that's okay. And I've just added in about 500 grams of tap hot water. That's going on. We're going to pop the lid of the thermomix on. We're going to take off the um, measuring cup and then I am going to um, pop on gently the um, omelette and that's going to steam beautifully and we're going to do that for um, I reckon about 30 or yeah about 13 minutes should be fine um, 13 minutes and we want to go for aroma temperature because we're steaming remember that's our steaming temperature and then I'm going to go at speed um, 2 because I want steam to be created and going a bit harder than normal right so while that's cooking so I'm sure you want to stay on and um, I can obviously disappear and come back but ask me any questions that you might have about your thermomix and things like that and maybe we could answer those but while we're doing that, um, let's just talk about pepper for a moment. So I've just grabbed my peppers. I thought you might be interested. You know I'm such a pepper girl. I love it so much. And Andrew's always saying to me, too much pepper, too much pepper. So um, I always mill my own little concoction. And I need to do that very soon because it's empty virtually. Um, and what I love to use is I, I tend to buy this one here and I will do about a third of this at a time. So when you've got your ground pepper, ideally, you know, about a month is ideally how long you should use it before grinding the next lot. So don't go ahead and grind all of this, although you can. Now to this, I like to add a little bit more of my favorites to get the balance that I personally like. And there's a whole range of different peppers. So, you know, you've got your black and your white, our traditional ones. And I'm not, you won't be able to see, but the black peppercorn, again, is, is actually picked and dried straight away. And that has a kind of a crinkly outside, so it's kind of strong and a little bit rougher. The white peppercorn picked at the same time, but it's actually soaked and that outer husk is taken off. Um, and it has a, a little bit of a hotter, but, but also I find a smoother taste, which is why I just love it so much. Um, we've got Sichuan pepper, which is actually isn't a pepper at all. 
It's actually um, a citrus um, and it's a citrus berry, but obviously it's used a lot in Chinese cooking. And then I love red pepper or pink peppercorn, should I say. I call those the, the, uh, the berry with, with um, attitude because it's, it's kind of akin to a chili, hot, spicy, really pungent. So, you know, it's just choosing the right peppers for what you're actually cooking. So what I like to do is I like to, um, into this mix, I'm going to add a fair chunk of white pepper and probably about six of the red. You can also get green peppers. So they are picked before they're kind of ripe. And the green peppers are often brined and you'll buy those in little jars, you know, as, peppered steak and things like that is just amazing for that. So a little bit of information on peppers while we're waiting. Any questions, Andrew? Um, Please say there's some questions. Just a question I asked a bit earlier. So it's a silver tray, why not use it? Okay, well, I can tell you. Because um, with the silver tray, um, it's just difficult for me to roll it. So you'll see in a minute, I can just literally lift that greaseproof paper off really super easy and I can use the paper to help me fold it. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to be able to do. So it's just a choice thing in terms of the presentation at the end. All right. Um, okay, let's talk about steaming because there's no one's answering any questions. I hope you find this useful. So I absolutely love steaming and if you're one of my customers, you know that's one of our core courses that I invite you on. And during that course, I teach you how to use the Thermomix manually steaming and we cook that beautiful teriyaki salmon dinner in about 15 minutes. We love that dinner, it's delicious. But the basic rule of thumb is that whenever you're steaming, you want to start off with 500 grams of water and that 500 grams of water will give you about half an hour of steaming time. If you, whatever you're steaming is going to take longer, then you need to add more water. So remembering, you know, for every 15 minutes extra, you need to add 250 mils of extra water. So if you've got a joint of corned beef in here that you, you're choosing to steam, that takes an hour, you're going to need a litre of water in here. It's like a maths lesson. Are you impressed, Andy? I'm not very good at maths, really, am I? You're hopeless. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always shouting up in the kitchen, Andrew, what is this? But since we've got Google, I just asked Google now, so Andrew's quite happy. So now when you're cooking, just remember that water can be quite valuable. So if you're steaming chicken, for example, the juices from that can be actually trapped in here. So you might decide to start off with a litre of water even though that chicken will take you a maximum of 20 minutes to steam. And the reason being, with that water, you're going to get the juices going in and you might add a tablespoon of vegetable stock paste. And at the end of that 20 minute cook, you've got a quite flavorful broth that you can use as a chicken stock or dumplings or just to drink. And it's going to be quite nutritious. So use your water, think about that. Um, moving up, we have the two layers in the Verona. Um, and often people will tell me or message me and say, look, they've cooked this and it's just not heated through or it's just not cooked. And the reason is, is that they've blocked all the holes. So in the bottom of the Verona dish, you've got those holes. It's really important to make little gaps so the steam can come up and travel and actually cook everything. Um, so just remember leaving those little gaps. If you're following me regularly, you know I use a little plating ring. Some people use like a muffin ring. So it just makes sure there's a gap for that steam to travel. Um, consideration needs to be given to what you're cooking. So if you are doing a selection of vegetables, remember your hard vegetables such as carrots, potatoes, will take longer to cook than your softer vegetables. So therefore you put those in first, give them about 10 minutes and then add in your softer vegetables. Um, and then also consideration needs to be given to the layering of your cook. So what you don't want to do is to put some chicken breasts on top of the um, brown tray and have your vegetables underneath because the juices will actually fall onto your vegetables. The same with some salmon, the salmon juices will fall onto your vegetables. So you need that protective layer. 
So what we've actually got in here, the baking powder, sorry, not the baking powder, the baking paper, that's a protective layer. That's going to trap anything from falling below, so that's going to be protective. Um, or you can use your tray. Now the other thing to remember is the basket is actually also a steamer. So with this dish, because we were cooking for about 13, 14 minutes, um, I could have put in some eggs in here, dropped it into the bus, into the Thermomix, and those eggs could have been cooking. And by the time this finishes, that's perfect timing for eggs. So you can actually think, um, if you've actually got something small, you could actually be steaming that at the same time. So you've got a whole number of layers that you can do. Does that all make sense? I hope so. <laughs> Any other questions, Andrew? Uh, there's, there's a few there, which are some of these you'll need to answer later. But... One question is your your pe your pepper mix is there is that on your blog? Um, I did a post a couple of years ago, um, but I will post it up again. But you you need to tweak it to your own tastes, um, and, and basically to mill your own pepper, make sure your bowl is dry. Very important to have a dry bowl. And then what I always do is I always make sure I pop in my my simmering basket. And the reason for that is as the blade spin, the pepper jumps up hits this and goes back down on the blades really quickly rather than jumping up here and then falling back down. So you get a quicker and better mix. And mixing it, depending on how coarse you want it, anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute. I tend to go about the 40 second mark, but it depends on quantity, etc. Um, so you can keep having a look and just judging for yourself. And you go at speed 10. So it's very simple. And remember, just do small quantities because that way your pepper, just like coffee beans, it's going to be fresher and more pungent in your cooking. And just a reminder how to uh, look at this video again for those who yeah. join later. So, so basically, I do two types of classes. I do lives. When I do a live, it is live. So you'll see all my mistakes and that's why I'm filling in time here because it's a continuation until I stop it. Um, and that live is on Facebook. And on Facebook, let me just grab something here. You do have mistakes. I've never seen you make mistakes. Oh gosh, really? Frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Cynical, are we today? I'm just being sarcastic. Mm. Can you do coffee beans as well in the... Um... In the thermo? Oh, absolutely. And grind down. Is that going to be on Cookie Do, grinding down coffee beans? That, I've done another post on that before. I'm just going to go to my Facebook page. Um, okay. So, look, my view is a little bit different from yours, but. On your Facebook page, you'll see these three little dots. If you click on those, you have, oh, you have got... Wait, hold it still. I'm sorry, I'm just looking. Uh, let me just go back. Yeah, under here, um, you've got photos. And if you go into there, that will show you all the photographs. So you'll be able to access recipe cards, my cheat sheets, all that kind of stuff in the photos. So that's years worth of information. There is also a heading called video, which it's, it's along here or under the three dots. That's where you'll find all my lives over the past few years, and there's hundreds of them there as well. So you can actually have a look at that. The other thing that you can do is you can search. So I could actually just type in there, just for shortness, egg. And then anything that I've done with eggs, my custard tarts. Oh, I love those custard yeah, tarts. Yeah, my poached egg recipe. Yum, look at that. It's always delicious. We love our poached eggs in the Thermomix. Um, but anything to do with eggs will actually pop up. Um, so you've got that search option on Facebook as well. And that's a really great one when you're hunting for information or things. Um, we've got a little draw to do, which we'll do in a second. So that's just about done. Okay, so I'm just going to stop that. When's your ebook coming out? Oh yeah, when's my ebook coming out? So it's looking great. 
So I actually stopped that about a minute before the end because it's, it's actually done. And then what I'm going to do is just while that's just settling down. Did you ignore that question on purpose? I did, it, as soon as I can get it out guys. <laughs> It will be coming soon. I'm just going to do a, um, a quick little salad um, to go with this. So I've just got some beautiful um, wild rocket there, some um, walnuts, um, and a little bit of olive oil, squeeze a lemon, and my favorite bird juice is going on there too. That'll be fine. I'm just going to mix those in. I, I'm very much a hands girl, so you can feel it. And I can feel how wet it is and whether I need to introduce anything else, but that's going to be absolutely delicious. A bit of salt and pepper, as always. Um, and as you make this, you'll get a feel for how much stock you actually eat in them. So a simple little side salad. And then um, I have got... One of your favourite fruits. I love these so much. Love them. Pig. It's a beautiful fresh pig here as well. So um, what I'm going to do now is just plate this up for everybody. So um, that was the last item that Colette added. Yeah, my bird juice. So you get that in Woolworths and it's just, it's like a vinegar, but it's just kinder it's not as harsh it's lovely so whenever you need to use white vinegar that's what you need to use so your salt and pepper container that's from the, um, yeah, that's the mix, mix shop. shop which i think everyone by now has actually got so look here's oh here's the omelette working in refined spaces and what i like to do now is just to give that a little fold so can you see why i prefer not to use the tray so i'm simply oh, going to, smell good. to lift that on here Okay, beautiful omelette, and then just move this a little bit to the side. Um, and then to dress that up, what I'm going to do um, is to um, pop down some truffle salt, but you can use whatever your favourite salts are. Some lovely truffle salt on here. And I am going to pop down this lovely green salad. I'm not going to put the... Um... Hmm? The what's my call it in there? Oh, I am. So the salad is down. Is that chives or parsley? Chives. Chives are going to be on top just for dressing it. Andrew's getting excited now, I can tell. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop that there in case he wants to squeeze the lemon down and um, just that beautiful fig, which we love so much. Just going to be scattered amongst theirs. Can you eat the whole fig, including the yeah. outside? Oh, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> that answers the question. <laughs> so, you know, a lovely, and let me tell you, this is a very tasty, because in here, we've got the ham, tomatoes, capsicum, onion, bit of garlic, obviously beautiful seasoning as well. And that's just gonna be a delightful dinner. And of course, it, eggs, low carb, it's a great thing to have. So, um, what else? Oh, the draw. We've got to do a quick draw, Andrew, before we go. So we had a draw a little while back when we, when I reached, I think it was my 13,000 followers. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, and I just need to go and find that post. And um, I said there would be a draw. So we're going to make this draw now. We haven't done a little draw for a while. I'm just going to come back and find it. Well, actually, I think I put a link to it on that post I did earlier. There we go. Where did you get your truffle salt from? Oh, that's just from Woolies. It's part the, I love this, um, the little Saxa brand. There's a whole range of them, and there's a smoked salt Does as show well. Show the camera. Sorry, a smoked salt as well. And you get the lovely little containers with the other. They're a little bit pricey, but they are so beautiful. And this kind of thing really makes me happy in the kitchen. Um, and the same with the bird juice. It's not the cheapest of things. You can, you can just use an ordinary... Um, white wine vinegar instead of that um but this one's beautiful so look this was the um yeah so when, when i reached the thirteenth thousand person and then everybody popped their comments and things down here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um roll it and then i'm going to stop and wherever my finger stops the person above will actually win a 50 dollar mix shop voucher 
Right, so let's get going. Okay, Andy, you're going to have to guide me here because I can't see you. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. Tell me if I need to go back up. So I'm going all the way down. No, it's all good. Yeah, 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 all yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I'm going to stop here. Is that a good place for me to stop? Is there, is there a name clearly above it? Diana Ross. Ooh! Diane Ross, but I like Diana Ross. <laughs> Diane Ross, you no, will Diane. Have, you'll have a beautiful uh, $50 mix shop voucher on the way to you. Can you please message me so I can get your details? And there's two other drawers for um, a free, beautiful Thermomix cookbook. So let's do this one here. Now, this is for anyone in Australia, obviously. So this one here. So that's Susie Bell. Susie! Okay, Susie Bell, if you can give me a, a message. I'll get that one of the cookbooks off to you. And then just scrolling up and down. Okay. Nicole D. something. Okay. <laughs> Nicole de Seguil. That'll do. Okay. Message me and I'll get that book to you. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, really. Thank you for your support. You guys are amazing. You bring a lot of joy to my life and you really um, help me enjoy my food journey, um, which I do so much. Do you want me to eat this? But I haven't taken a picture. Oh, you got to try it. Well, we know what it's like. We've had this so many times. Yeah, I know. Mm. I've been standing here doing this filming oh. for half an hour. I need a bit of payback so immediately. So tasty. Okay, thank you. Mm, yummy. So I'll put the recipe for that up on the blog this week, along with the butter chicken and my potato dauphinoise. So I've got a lot of typing up to do. And in between all that, I'll put another recipe in my ebook that I'm developing as well. Brilliant. Absolutely That's brilliant. Amazing. So light and fluffy and just it explodes with flavours in your mouth. I can taste that bit of truffle, mm. um, the chives, the, the capsicum, uh, a bit of garlic there. I love the salad. I love the salad, actually. That's my... Mm. Okay, everybody. Diana Ross is here. Sorry, Diane Ross. Diane Ross says thank you very much. Yay! Just message me, Diana, and we'll get this all organised for you. Thank you, everyone. That's me done for tonight. Have a beautiful evening and a beautiful day tomorrow, and I will see you next time. Say goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. <laughs> okay, you can sit down and eat this now. Can I have the figs? I don't want the figs. I don't like figs. Oh, I love them. Well, well I like the figs, the one that's you know, the brown. You get out. Help from those little containers. Mm. I might put some balsamic on top of that, it'll be beautiful. The mm. sat bas I'd eat it if you put balsamic vinegar okay, on it. I, I love it that. I won't put it on there then. You won't? <laughs> Why? Oh, because <laughs> I'll eat it. Okay. <laughs>